Welcome, everybody, to Google Cloud Innovators and Telecommunications. I'm Brian Krasik, and I have with me a very special guest from Accenture. Hakan, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Hakan Ekman is my name. I'm running in Accenture, the network practice in the telco industry, and it's a pleasure to be here today. I tell you what, we've had a great partnership with Accenture, and you're on the networking side. Really critical space for the communication service providers, and they're trying to achieve an autonomous network. Just last week, we announced our Thomas Network Framework, and I know we've been doing work together. Could you tell, him, tell me more about what you're doing from an Thomas Network perspective? In 2023, we signed the manifesto on the Autonomous Network uh, Framework here at the TM Forum. Um, means we have to reach a certain level with our own services. Why this is important? The industry um, is requiring support to help on network efficiency, on CAPEX and OPEX. Then agility is a topic to do things faster than before. The things you did in weeks, you should do in seconds. Uh, regarding uh, CAPEX and OPEX efficiency, when you build networks, it should be much more efficient. The operating costs and also the, the invest you do it. And the third aspect uh, was the monetization. And luckily, the uh, autonomous network framework is helping uh, along the network cycle, uh, life cycle, uh, helping the industry to, to understand uh, how to really do things faster, how to do it more efficient. And uh, we started um, with the framework uh, to working on our offerings, of course. Yes. And then we engaged also uh, with Google how we can do things together, which we will discuss today. Well, that's a, that's a pretty important piece because I, being in the industry for some time, you can't do it on your own. It's a it's an ecosystem, and when we look at it from a data ingestion perspective, you know, you have to have the Nokia's, you have to have the Ericsson's, the Amdocs. We got to get that data in. We have to be able to create that GNN from a graph neural network perspective and understand relationships. Can you tell me more about what's happening there? Yeah, when we look a bit more careful into the uh, uh, framework, there are five levels. The first level usually is uh, data consolidation, fundamental. You have to have structured data. Then you usually start with uh, automation, basic automation, I would call it. And we've been doing that for some time. Yeah, we're doing it. Yes. Then usually, this you can even do with, uh, with basic tools, uh, but the, the next level is the radical automation. Uh, then really radical automation is becoming. And usually the digital twin is kicking in. Uh, and the digital twin, twin is a big aspect. Big, big aspect, you, you want to simulate, you want to see what's going on in your network and what will be triggered when you, for example, change the network architecture or the configuration. Therefore, the digital twin is kicking in at level three and then the AI is playing a big role. And then usually from the level three to level five, you're becoming autonomous. And in that journey, the first exercise is getting data structure. And I think here, the collaboration we have here with Google is uh, system critical, I would call it, because you have to understand the data. You have to understand the data from the regular OEMs, Ericsson, Huawei, Nokia, Samsung, Mavin here. Then also here, Juniper, Ericsson, um, uh, also from uh, Cisco. And here, uh, that collaboration is essential because together we are making sure that your uh, data solution is familiar with the OEMs. If it's not familiar, you don't have the autonomy you're going to need. So if we can exactly. create that, it's the mapping almost exactly. that needs to happen. Exactly. That's, a, that's some energy. Yeah, and here the, the, the collaboration started that we together make sure that the solution, the Google solution, understands data and, and the specific data from the specific menus and being agnostic, being agnostic when it comes to interpretation of data. And now that I have the data, I'm going to level, level up with AI and get to another degree, yeah? Exactly. How are you thinking of using AI and in particular Gen AI and Gemini? Exactly. To bring uh, Gen AI or general AI at scale into production, you have to do certain steps. 
And one step is you look into workflows and I'm just taking uh, two or three of them, incident management and network operation, alarm management or network optimization. Yeah? Uh, those workflows, you have to make digital and you have to transform them. And here in our collaboration, we're working on uh, making them digital, showing them up in a digital twin and triggering actions in the network will end up in bringing in automation and AI at scale for certain workflows. When I look to the telecom landscape, and I'm just taking the ETOM uh, process landscape, you will end up maybe in 60, 70 sub-processes. And in our collaboration, we will digest each and every of them and make sure that the, the data being injected and also then the, the trigger we will put into the network is fitting together. And here, um, the agents will play a big role to bring uh, automation and AI at scale into the network. It's with the agents. And, and tell me more about those agents. How long does it take you to build an agent? How is that agent learning? Is it going to be a, a whole mess of agents? Is it going to be one agent? Is it going to be orchestration across agents? What does that agent environment look like for the network? Uh, first, in our collaboration, we agreed on, on the concept that we speak the same language, that uh, a certain architecture should be given. Uh, uh, in, in an agentic uh, framework, you're talking about orchestrator agents, super agents, utility agents, all this technology we align together. And then we started with the first agents. We just finished uh, to develop uh, 11 agents. And the first one uh, together with Google was the energy management uh, agent we built together. Here, the idea was to trigger on top of the features, the regular OEMs are bringing in, um, energy savings in the network, mm -hmm. but not during the night. We did this just during the daytime. We should not do the energy saving only overnight. We should do it at any time. And that was the exercise. And here the idea was uh, to do the, uh, make the resources available when they are needed as a design principle. And then we uh, used uh, data infused uh, from your system and took then our algorithms and triggered then the resource allocation when they are needed. And then we could see that it was much more uh, harmony in the network, the user experience improved, and the energy saving was was it. So you that look at exactly. some anomaly detection, you look at the energy savings, it leads to better customer experience. And that's part of what understanding the network, making it more automated, and speeding up that process can do. Exactly, exactly. But uh, when I said 60 or 70 means that exercise, we have to do 60 times or 70 times. And then the whole network life cycle will be covered. And then it's, it's about further improvement. You know what else you can do. And here it is important conceptually that we um, work with uh, use connectors, that we can ha uh, develop something, an innovation, and just bring it in into an environment which is working. Then you avoid big release cycles you have usually traditionally in the, in the industry, it should be developed and it should be improved through the connectors. And here, it is important that uh, the, the architecture and the platform being deployed with the client is allowing that. And here, uh, luckily, uh, in our collaboration, we're working on an integrated process that uh, the Google solution can interact with anything we have deployed it doesn't matter what compute is there. The Google Autonomous Network uh, Operation Solution will be connected. It doesn't matter what network brain we're using, the orchestration. That's right. Your solution will be connected. When we develop agents now, it will be connected. When we use other agents from other library, uh, libraries, we will just connect them. Well, that's a really p uh, important piece, too, yeah. because... Now I can build my own agents, you can build agents, but it is connected into a common framework and you get capabilities out of that. 
and you can do it at speed. It's not throwaway work. It's collaboration and choice. Exactly. At the end, the output is important. And when, for example, the output of a certain agent is not sufficient, then you should be able to replace that agent. Uh, and when we see uh, some data is missing, we can pull in other data and train yeah, the system. Working together, the together yeah. to make this happen. Exactly, exactly. Well, it's a pretty fabulous space, and I, we really appreciate the partnership and bringing that together, Accenture and Google Cloud coming together to deliver that autonomous network. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for all the time here. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the, the discussions we had here. There's a clear ask from the industry, we should take the strong data capability Google has and bring in the talk in depth knowledge to enhance. That was a clear ask by all the operators we both met recently. Well, it's amazing. And I think we're both up for the challenge to make this happen. Thanks for the Thank time. You. And Thank I you very much. Looking forward to for further collaborating and uh, wish you a nice uh, day. And that's it for now, Google Cloud innovators in telecommunications.